This is a vision media broadcast viewers once again we have an another special show she's an actress comedian businesswoman she has she wear many hats in the business mother um, mother uh she she has a lot going on she's a chef <laughs> she has a lot this is melanie camacho now i don't want to mess the last name up is it camacho camacho it's comarcho comarcho nothing to do with spanish it's from the bahamas okay it's where my name originates melanie, he's a black man he's a black man <laughs> great melanie comarcho comarcho <laughs> wow and you said were you were you born and raised um and you said the caribbean correct or no no i was born in chicago and i moved to la when i was eight years old okay and been here ever since okay wow because you know when people see the last name and like wow i wonder if she mixed i wonder if she you know i know you got no that. that's my ex-husband that's my ex-husband's last name and no he ain't mixed either <laughs> just a black man from detroit with a crazy name okay no problem <laughs> boosters we're going to go back to appearances um the first time, la yeah B boosters la I, I see it in the background you see it back there I, I see it i see it okay the, the first time i saw you um was on um deaf comedy jam your first stand-up that's when i saw you okay and i just wanted to take it back to that but before we get to that can you tell me like um how did you get into stand-up comedy what made you get into it it was a dare I went to a comedy club. The comics weren't funny to me. I wanted my money back. And my friends were with me. They put $50 on the table because I was saying, shit, I can do that. And they put $50 on the table. And I went and asked the manager if I could do, a, you know, three minutes. And she said, yeah, because it was dead in there. I went to go see Robin Harris, but he had passed and I didn't know it because I wasn't a comedian or trying to be no comedian. It just he was funny and i wanted my friends to see the funny guy and um next thing i know i'm on stage talking about my friends and they were like can you come back and i went home all excited telling my husband and he's like uh no you cannot go back you got you work and you go to school i'm not gonna be babysitting when i get off work the kids while you go to school and do comedy so pick one Wow. So, so when school got out, I, I started doing comedy in January. Oh wow. So you just actually just took you just took a chance like risk and got up and, and did your thing. You asked me. Right. I still had my day job. I was a technician at Hughes Aircraft. I wasn't quitting my job yeah, for yeah. no for comedy. You know, uh, I had benefits. <laughs> comedy has no benefits. Zero. That's, and yeah, that's another thing I'm gonna get into down down the road, and it's a shame. It is. Well, that's how it happened. I know you said you, you grew up in Chicago, right? No, I grew up in Los Angeles. I was Los born Angeles. in Chicago, born in Chicago and I moved to L.A. at eight years how, old. OK, at eight years old, which was which was young. How was that growing up in, in um, L.A.? It was fine for me. My, my mother kept me sheltered, um, sheltered. We I didn't I wasn't you know, I could see the gangs, but they never bothered me. It was oh, okay. a ball. I had a good time dancing and partying. I was the party animal back in the, you know, high school. Back in high school. Yeah, so you used to walk past gangs and everything, too? <laughs> gangs, prostitutes, everything on the way to school. Oh, wow. No wow. other way. And I know about around that time, it was a little, it was wilder, you know, than it is. Well, I don't know. Way which wild. One. Yeah, way wild back then. Yeah. Way wild in L.A prostitution was ridiculous well I, I, well I know i know it was out there you know and just the fact that like i said i talked about on um, hbo or uh, deaf comedy jam did you actually get a phone call or did someone spot you and said look i have somewhere you know to take you how did that happen with deaf comedy jam i was doing this comedy competition at the bay area comedy competition and you have to audition to be in the competition so Bob Sumner, the guy who books Deaf Comedy Jam, was at that audition. And I got a standing ovation at the audition, but I didn't make it out the first round. But he saw me and said, nah, you're going to take Deaf Comedy Jam. And 
I didn't even know what Def Jam was. I never heard of it. And everybody was so excited for me that, you know, I got excited too. And next thing I know, I'm going to New York to tape Def Jam. Wow. And, and see, that was wonderful. Wonderful. How long did you did you actually tape? Like, were you on? I know you were on it a few times, correct? Right. Yeah. Well, the first time, I think we get like six to ten minutes, something <laughs> like that. Yeah. My first time I had a, such a good show that Martin Lawrence was the host and he was trying to make me go back out to get a standing ovation. But I was I was terrified. There's no way I was going back yeah. out there. <laughs> well, being on stage for those people, you were, you were also scared out there, right? Yeah, that was my first show ever, you know, in front of TV. And I'm, I'm in New York. I saw Showtime at the Apollo. I know what they do. They, yeah, they, they some booers. <laughs> they will boo you. In a, in, in a Def Jam, you know, in New York. So I was scared of that, but I ended up having a great show. And as soon as I came off stage, Bob Sumner said, You're on tour. What? I'm on tour. Just like that. And it's crazy because I got laid off my job the same day I taped my first Def Comedy Jam. I told him, Mail me my check. I'm going to New York. <laughs> I was going to just get into that. If they're telling you they want you to go on tour, but you were still working at the aircraft at the time, right? But you got laid off. Well, I got laid off. Then we taped the Def Comedy Jam. And so it was months before the tour actually happened because they wanted to wait till after the show aired. Okay. So the show probably aired in June or something. And then we started touring around September. Okay, wow, wow. How was Martin in person? Like, I know he took you guys out, you know, and just had a good Coolest time. guy ever. Coolest guy on the planet. I love him for life. He took me on probably four tours with him. Wow. And uh, the first tour, he, I thought I was in trouble. He called me and Melanie! And I was like, oh, God, what did I do? What did I do? But he called to tell me that um, when I'm on tour, you're on tour. I was like, for real? Wow. And a lot of people say that. And stuff happens, but he stayed true to his word, and he kept me on tour with him. We toured a lot. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, shout out to Martin Lawrence. And also, you get a lot of um, people promising you things, right, in, in L.A. and stuff like that. Like, we're going to do this for you, do that for you, but this time it actually happened with Martin, right? Man, you don't even know. If I had a dollar for everything somebody told me, I'd be a multimillionaire. So I don't even put my trust in man. I give it to God. God has always answered my prayers when I, you know, I sometimes I, I'm going to beat myself up and I'm like, why did you ask him? You should ask God first instead of him. Because right. he said he bullshitted you and God gave it to you. Well, you're right. And and just by you doing a lot of a stand up, have you ever, uh, I want to say bombed on stage and how did you get out of that situation? I was so blessed. Um, I haven't bombed, but every comic has a show that they don't like. The audience loved it, but you know what you can do in your heart and you didn't do it that night, but they still lined up waiting to take a picture, get an autograph and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. the only, I got booed once and that was at the showtime at the Apollo. Oh. They, they didn't boo me off because, you know, once I, I was telling a joke about me and using the back, you know, taking a test for the doctor. And I'm like, how can you get your pee in that little bitty cup when you can't even get it in that big ass toilet? And the men went crazy. Boo! They booed you. And so I got the women on my team. I was like, ladies, where y'all at? And they, they saved me. So I made it through. So basically, you got to have tough skin in whatever you do, but especially stand up. Because if you make it through the Tough Apollo, you, you're good. Right. Make it through that. And it's wow. been some legends who didn't make it through the Apollo. So it was really scary. Mm -hmm. the, before I went out, the people were like, you going to wear that? I had on some thigh high boots, which is my trademark, and a, and a tam on my head and a mini skirt. And it was like, ooh, ooh. But <laughs> they showed me love. It wasn't, they didn't have no problem with my outfit. That's right. It was that, that first joke. <laughs> That first joke, but you have been doing that, you know, wearing what you wanted. You did what you did from the beginning. You never switched up, you know. Right. So, so you didn't. It didn't matter what people said. You just you did you, basically. Oh you know? yeah, I, the I, the boots are my trademark. 
Mm -hmm. um, sometimes in the summer, I don't wear them because it's just like too hot for some thigh high boots. So I just put some sandals on them. But yeah. in the winter, you're going to catch me with every, I, I got quite a few of them. So. <laughs> Ain't no wrong with that. And going on tour, let's, let's go back to that. I know you've been on tour with Martin. You said about maybe four times, three or four times. How was tour life and, and away from home? Do they actually take care of you with clothing, food, and everything while you out there with them? No, no, no. You, you when you're that, what the tour takes care of is transportation, housing, and okay. food. So they'll feed you, put you in a hotel, and take care of your transportation. And you got to get your own clothes, but your clothes is a write-off with your taxes. Okay, so, so you buy, um, yeah. Yeah, my, my boots are right off. I'm not wearing these anywhere but on stage. Okay. And um, yeah, so they they the tour takes care of you real good. We flew private. Most of the tours I was on, we were on the G4, wow. getting on tour buses. It, it was amazing. Wow, yeah. It sounds like it's, a lot which is such a blessing. Wow. So I what, toured what? With, Go ahead. with Martin, Cat yeah. Williams, the I Deaf know. Comedy Jam, and Chris <laughs> Tucker. And Maxwell. Wow, the singer. I was gonna get into all of that too, uh, with for tour with Martin, uh, Cat Williams, Chris Tucker. Um, how how is it? You know, all of those guys, those funny guys on one bus or one one G four. How was that that environment? This with everybody. Did they still crack and joke? Well, <laughs> We weren't all on the same G4. When it was Cat Williams' tour, it was us on the G4. When it was Martin's tour, it was his yeah, group yeah. on, you know, and then Chris Tucker. So it was not like Chris, Cat, and Martin, and they was all on the same G4. No, we were on separate planes with different tours. Okay. So it was amazing. Um, the only one that I was had another female was the one with Cat. All the other tours, I was the only lady, so they treated me like a queen bee. Um, right. Even Cat treated me like the Queen Bee as well, but the others they really looked out because I was the only lady and I'm right. kind of little. So, okay, yeah, with, with the Cat, with Cat Williams or Martin, I didn't know who actually. I always thought you was managed by them, you know, because I know you went out with Cat, you went out with Martin. It wasn't no type of thing where you had to sign a contract to be in there. Did they have like a, a group? Because I know uh, Cat Williams always brought people with them. Always, you right? Know, you're shy. Well, yeah, you 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 sign up at, at the beginning. You know, sometimes they have NDAs, so you won't be telling what's on the tour. But oh. once after that first tour, they realized, you know, I'm not that girl. I'm not. Uh, I'm not messy at all. Then I didn't have to sign anything after that first one. But you know, they got to look out for themselves. All of these are millionaires. Right. So they got to make sure you're not out here trying to ruin them or you know say something bad about them. That's right. But after the first one, uh, no. And everybody I ever toured with called me back, except for Maxwell. Except but, for Maxwell. You know. well, well, that's under your belt. So you, you were there. So it doesn't, you know. Yes. When he was at his hottest in right. Maxwell 99. That's what I did 30 minutes. And then he went and did an hour and a half. Wow. Wow. That, that, amazing. That was, yeah, that was amazing. How do you speak to like not speak to him? How was your relationship with Cat Williams and Martin Lawrence? You know, just by everybody. You know. I talk to everybody still. You know, when I see them, we're all busy. They doing what they doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. If we run into each other, ain't nothing but love. You know, but everybody's on their own journey. So I don't see a lot of people that much. Like if they're in concert in LA and I'm uh, I'm at home too, I'll call them for tickets and go to the show and support. Okay. But other than that, you know, I see him when I see him. See him when you see him. You know, you've been there. You, you know, yep. you, you've you been on that tour. You know, everybody got to go and keep on going forward. <laughs> you know right, I mean? right. Uh, you also, let's talk about the Jamie Foxx show. Um, how did oh, that happen? I saw that. <laughs> yeah, how did, how did that happen to Jamie Foxx? I got an audition, then they called me to come in. They were like, they want you for the Jamie Foxx show. I was like, what? Okay, let's do it. And, and so that's I it. auditioned for it, booked it, and got it. That wow. was cool too. Yeah, I was going to ask you how was that in relationship with him? You know, on you know, just, just love me some Jamie. So glad he's back to a hundred percent. You know, yeah, good people. 
again. He's he's a good guy. I like Jamie. I knew Jamie way before he ever made um, Living Colors. We used to do comedy at this comedy club in L.A. called the Townhouse, and he was yeah. there all the time. Yeah. So she is basically you have a relationship in history with, with a lot of those big big A listers out there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, everybody. Steve Harvey, Cedric, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, I want to say that the thirty third annual NAACP Image Award, right? Oh, I was a writer. <laughs> yeah, you was a writer. How, now, being a writer, how how long were you um a part of that, you know, as a writer? Well, I was a writer because of Chris Tucker. So I was writing for Chris and Chris was hosting. So when he hosts, I write for him. Okay. And that's how that went. He brought me along as his writer. They got writers too, but he yeah. wanted me. Okay. Well, yeah, you've been all around. First Sunday, Ice Cube. Yeah. <laughs> and First guessing, Sunday. Wow. Yeah. And Tracy Morgan and Ice Cube. That was Tracy Morgan, amazing. That Williams, that's right. That's right. I think Ricky Smiley. Yeah, Ricky Smiley. All of them. And I didn't know anybody was in it until I saw it. Because on my day, I only filmed one day, and it was just me, Tracy, and Q. So I didn't see okay. the whole movie. But David Talbert, the director, is a good friend of mine. So okay. I, I broke bread with him and his family on Thanksgiving. You know, I've gone up to their house and with the whole family and ate Thanksgiving dinner a couple of times. So he's okay. good people, and he put me on, because I've never auditioned for Cube Vision for anything he's ever done. I've never oh. read for anything. You never read for for anything with Cube Vision. I never got an audition offer from Cube Vision. Well, as far as um, we talked about um, your husband when you first got up there and and did the performance, the stand up, you said, and mm -hmm. you went back and said you you would like to keep it, you know, keep doing it. Did your fit? Uh, did family and friends try to talk you out of becoming a comedian? No, they were all like, go for it. They were supportive? Everybody was very supportive. Nobody said, don't do that. They said, don't quit your day job. That's what they said. But <laughs> God yeah. God terminated that for me. And I ain't looked back since. I, this is all I do. I, 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 I'm not selling no Bitcoin or anything else. Wow. A little pussy every once in a while. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't sell anything. I just, God is good. I just do this comedy. You know, you got to stack your chips when you're working mm -hmm. and, you know, use them when you ain't working. Wow. Yeah. And that's, see, when you get into the industry like that, you know, just the business alone, what, um, what happens when, you know, tell me about uh, Melanie's life. If you're not on tour, you're not filming. What are you doing at that time, at that moment, when you're not doing anything? Writing. I'm writing some new material or a movie. That's okay. what I'm pretty much doing. Yeah, my kids are grown and gone. I, you know, they got their own lives. And I see my grandkids, you know, when I see them. Yeah. We do TikTok videos and stuff like that. But I write and I relax. You know, people be like, come on and go with me to such and such. I'm, I, all I've been doing is flying this month. I'm chilling. I want to stay home in my own bed. That's right. That's right. Flying. That's right. Flying all over the world. You know, all over You're, the world. Okay. You mind me asking, how old are your grandkids you just spoke about? I have uh, an 18 year old, a 17 year old, and a okay. seven year old. Wow. Okay. Okay. I know this. Yeah. Seven. We all started early. I started <laughs> early and so did my kids. <laughs> the seven year old spoiled, you, right? Correct. What's that? Is she spoiled the seven year old? Oh, rotten. All of them spoiled. The 17, 18, <laughs> and the seven. <laughs> all spoiled ridiculously. Wow. Man, that, that's beautiful. You know, to come in. But so was I. My sister and I were uh, two. And we were spoiled. My mom spoiled us to death. It wasn't anything we didn't get or any place we didn't go as kids. Wow. wow. So she she kind of, she did everything. You know, she she wanted everything. To have World's greatest mom. Wow. That's great. That's great. That's yeah. great. No drugs, alcohol. My mama didn't do none of that stuff. No, no hoeing. She wasn't didn't have no men all up and in and out of our house after she got divorced from my dad. She's a good. She was a teacher as well for LA Unified. Oh, okay, 
okay, when you get into this business, did, did your mom have a long talk with you about the business, you know, about the ups and downs? No, she just told me stuff like, don't get your honey where you make your money. Okay. And I was like, oh, she's yeah, trying to tell me don't do it to none of them comedians, which right. I have not. That's right. That's right. Wow, that's that's wonderful. Because I hear a lot of things like people got to do this to get up top. If, if you don't do this, you can't move forward. You know, you hear a lot about this business. Well, right? maybe that's why I'm stuck because I'm not doing I'm not doing anything that is going to mess with my morals. I'm sorry. Okay. That's right. I don't chase people and I don't kiss no ass. I hear that. Either you like me or you don't. <laughs> I hear that. No, as what? long as I got enough people that like me to keep me working, I don't care about the ones that don't. That's right. That's right. It doesn't matter. They're not paying your bills. I mean, you know, at all. You don't not a one. What has been your favorite role so far in your career? uh well i what the one i get the most love for is the three strikes yeah. i can't even remember that ended up happening because my attorney was the attorney to dj Pooh, who was i think the director or something of that movie yeah. and i i went over there i went to lunch with my attorney that day and later on we went over to the set and everybody there knew me except for dj Pooh. okay and he was like, hey, can you come back and shoot something tomorrow? And I was like, oh, uh, hell yeah. Right. And I went and they, I was looking like a dream when I went the first day. And when I came back, they put gold teeth in my mouth and gold stuff in my hair. I'm like, what? Why are we doing this? Oh, we want, we got to make you ghetto. That's, that's, come yeah, on so now. That's the character they was looking for. They were trying to go for man they had me toe up i'm like why y'all got me looking like this oh well whatever yeah three strikes with with uh brian hooks and e40 right right yes yeah three up yep. and and you know what i'll go on every now and then to check the movie out you know because it's, it's funny his movies is definitely, right you know and was it, what, was the, what was the most challenging role that you have played challenging role I think the one uh, boosters la my film was the most challenging Booster, yeah, because man. a lot of people was like well she was just being her that wasn't me that's not how i act that was lisa my character was who was an only child i'm not no only child and yeah. um a lot of things lisa did i would i would never do so that yeah. was the challenge the the scene in boosters where i'm talking to my mother that was hard because that was actually my mother's picture and oh. i'm talking to her so it was bringing out a lot of emotions there wow. so yeah that was probably my most that was your most challenging role boosters and this is the movie boosters la right right, right. and did you write and produce this movie and directed and starred in and edited, edited. and scored that's right i did everything because i couldn't get any help so i asked god again can yeah. you help me father I'm, I'm crying and everything trying to get this done because you know a lot of people talk about what they're gonna do but they would never get it done you don't know how many people said oh i'm gonna make a movie and i'm still waiting on that movie especially the critics the people who got something to say i'm like well show me send me your link so i can see how it's supposed to be done that's right that's right right when, so for the viewers that don't know about boosters la can you give them a little synopsis of, of the movie just just a little bit okay so boosters la is about a guy james who has been doing this boosting undercover he's the head of a big boosting operation and he's undercover none of the boosters know who he is and what he's trying to do is save up enough money to go legit and get his own store and quit his job at the county okay. and get a, a, his own store and mission accomplished at the end of the movie he gets his store and it's just the ups and downs i got everybody in that film from Tiffany Haddish, it's John Witherspoon's last film. It's A.J. Johnson's last film. It's Boogie B's last film. Wow. So wow. three of the people in my film have already passed on. Yeah. And this was their last project. I almost took them out the film. And then everybody was like, no, you got to keep them. This is the last thing they did, keep it in there. And so I did. And I think it's funny. I enjoyed it. I, I um, 
you know, I edited it myself. I knew this, it was the story that I wanted to tell. No one had ever did a movie like this before. So I wanted to do it. And I did it. Wow. Just the fact that you, you know, you put your mind to it and, and you did this. Like I wrote a book before. I never did. My first time writing, I just went on and did it. But look at that. See? Yeah. And it happened. And where's it at right now? Where's your book at? On Amazon right now. That's, that's where I put it. And at. what's the name of it? It's called the 2OM. It's from where I'm, where my neighborhood. It was a, a gang back then called the Morocco's back in, Phil in Philadelphia. It's called okay. The, it's called the 2OM Post Office Boys. It was called. The oh, Post okay, okay. Y'all yeah, hear that on Amazon? <laughs> That's right. 2OM Post Office. And you can catch Boosters LA on 2B TV. It don't cost you nothing. <laughs> Just go watch and laugh your ass off and leave a comment. Leave a comment. That's right. And I'm glad you mentioned that it's on 2B. Um, yes. When, when you upload, when you put a movie on Tubi, is it like, how was that? How, how was, how did you get money? You have to out? get you a distributor first. Okay. So what I did was I got a distributor and he puts it up on okay. Tubi. I did a three year deal. So December, 2024 will be the end of my deal. So either I can put it back up or I can go somewhere else with it or take it to a whole nother network. Cause I own it. It's mine. That's right. That's so what you're doing is like renting it out to Tubi for three years. It's usually a three-year year deal on Tubi. And you need a distributor. Indie Films was my distributor for Boosters LA. So once you meet the criteria for Boosters, I mean for Tubi, then mm -hmm. they put your movie up if they think it's any good. And because I had the people in it that I had in it. You know, John Witherspoon, like I said, Earthquake, Tiffany, Tiffany Haddish. Haddish. Yeah, AJ everybody, yeah. Kim Whitley, Sherry Shepard, everybody is in this film. Bro, man from the Fifth Flow. Oh, the list goes on and on. There's so many comics you'll recognize once you see the wow. film, and I'm in it too. Wow! And while while being on stand up, how long did you go back to be a writer, producer? Were you doing this while on while doing stand up on HBO Def Comedy Jam, or did you go to school afterwards? To, to I never write. went to school. I never went to school. I you just read a lot of books on how to do it. I read screenwriting books on how the script should be done. And I wrote the script. I went and got a final draft, which is an app for screenwriting. And I wrote the film. I wrote a few films. But yeah, Boosters LA, it, it really, I had to downgrade it because the film I had had trucks backing into store windows and grabbing everything out I, I couldn't afford to do that so you know i had to change a few things but it still came out pretty good well, but yeah you got to get a distributor and meet the criteria for audio picture and yeah. sound yeah. to get put up well i seem like a, a lot of hard work but once you get through that now it's like you you ready to take on anything you ready to I'm ready things. now. Yeah, it's you know. a learning experience, is what right. it was. I learned a lot. I learned what not to do for the next one. I wasted a lot of money on this film that I didn't have to, but now I know better. Well, do you have other people in your corner, like uh, other producers or writers, that will actually, you know, guide you and talk to you about how to do things? The, the well, now way? I've done it myself, so. Pretty much can't tell me nothing now because I did it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I would definitely listen to any advice given to me. I mean, you know, technology the way it is, every day there's a new trick. You know, yeah. they didn't have filters when I was making Boosters LA, but they got filters now. So a lot of those scenes where I couldn't afford the makeup lady that day and I did my own makeup and I'm like, oh, Lord, oh, God, too bad, <laughs> you know. But now when it comes down in December, I can fix that. That's I right. can put a filter on it and make me beautiful in those scenes that I'm not happy with. So technology advances every day. There's something so new. So easier now, right? Right. right. Wow. And we also can go back to the Chris Rock show, Vibe, the Keenan Ivory Wayne show, Arsenio Hall, the Soul Train uh, Comedy Awards. You've been all around. I got the whole soul train too back in. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I Snoop was on. Snoop, oh, Snoop so it was, was full circle. Snoop was the headliner when I was hosting. 
And I was terrified because that was like the second thing I ever did on TV. And I'm nervous, visibly shaking. And Snoop was like, what's wrong with you? You just did a theater last night with 3,500 yeah. people. I was like, I know, but there wasn't no cameras. Wow. So you did it. I mean, you've been around. And with the Soul Train, with the Comedy Awards, just hosting that alone, how did that make you feel just by getting that phone call? And, and how did that happen anyway, like, to, to get up there and do that? What, the Def Jam 25? The, the, uh, Soul Train, the Soul Train Comedy Awards. Well, that happened because I had won this competition called the uh, Soul Train Comedy Awards. They only had one. Okay. And um, it was this guy named Daryl Heath won the man and I won the woman. And one of the pack rises was we got like five thousand dollars. You get to perform on Arsenio Hall and you get to host Soul Train. So wow. that's how all that happened. I got wow. to do Arsenio back in the day, the first time before he had Farrakhan on. And then I got to do it again when he came back. Okay, well, that, that was great. You ever brought your family on with you, like travel with you? Rarely. I, my sister came with me New Year's Eve this year. I did a show called uh, Gary Owens and Friends. It was me, Country Wayne, Donnell Rollins, ooh, yeah. T. Rowe, mm -hmm. and somebody else. But we had a ball in Dallas at the Metroplex, which is like a 5,000 seater. So my sister came with me there because my father lives in Dallas. So we went to go visit our dad, you know, after the show, we hung out with him for a day and then came back. Now, when I would go on like the Tom Joyner cruises and stuff like that, I would take my sister with me. But um, other than that, nope. I've usually got some kind of road manager or somebody. That was my next question too. I know you have an entourage, right? Not too many, but you do have a, a team, a team with you, right? Well, I got kind of. It's really just a two people team, you know. But okay, uh huh. I don't have Is an entourage like Cat or Martin and them. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have enough money for an entourage. <laughs> you're there. You you are you on your way. You you'll have it in a minute. <laughs> I'm <will>. praying. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. Are there any new projects? Yeah. Are, are you excited about? Well, you know, looking forward to in the future. To yes, I got some stuff coming up, but I can't talk about it yet. Um, okay. Just follow me on Instagram, Melanie Comarcho, and you'll see. There's some stuff coming up, and I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to start filming, and right. I will definitely be letting you know. But what's coming up, I'll be at the Baltimore Comedy Factory in Baltimore this weekend. I think the weekend, two weeks after that, I'll be in Oakland at the Tommy T's. Right. Go to my page, and you'll see everything I'm doing. I'm going to Vegas. Um hopefully super bowl weekend but i'm going on march the 6th as well um yeah I'm, I, i'll do one mic stand mike uh, epps new club in detroit february 22nd and 23rd one mic yes stand. so just follow me on my page and you'll be able to see everywhere i'll be and you can pull up that's right check out melanie cold marcho right Billy right? ain't that far from Baltimore. No, no, it's like maybe two hours, maybe less than two hours. It's not that far at all. Okay. My wife, my wife and I drive back and forth to the uh, it's the seafood spot called Moe's at the end of the harbor. Okay. Yeah, we all wow. a lot. So. Yeah, okay, gonna... you gonna have me checking it out in the snow? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm. I'm, I'm glad you still. You know you. You know you still out there. You're doing your thing, and it. it Thank it only God. Gets, it only gets bigger and better. That's yeah, funny. a lot of people we've lost along the journey. On my journey, I've lost a lot of comic friends. That's right. Yep. Is is there a role that you have not played but would like to? Yeah, I want to play uh, uh, opposite Denzel in something. Okay. I want y'all to see my dramatic side. That's <laughs> what I did in high school. I did a lot of drama plays. Yeah. I was never even thinking about no comedy or anything like that. So, yeah, I did a lot of um, 
plays. I got a top one time, long time ago, um, Norm Nix was trying to manage me. And okay. that's like Denzel's best friend type of, they're really good friends. Norm. And so they had a, a bar here in LA and Norm brought me over to tell some jokes at this bar. And after I came off, I had a really good show that night. And when I came off, Denzel came up to me and started repeating one of my jokes. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Amazing, so, right? Amazing. Yeah. Surprised the who listens to you. They will be watching you. Wow. You never know. And you'd be so I have been so surprised. Um, I've gone up to actors at the airport and was like, oh, my God, I love your work. And he was like, and I love yours, Melanie. What? <laughs> How do you know who I am? Oh, my God. So, yeah, that feels real good. You actually met Denzel. Did you sit and talk with him? I did. And his wife and Debbie and, and Norm Nix. Yes, I got a chance to talk to all of them. So cool. And Debbie, I love Debbie. Debbie, I won that Soul Train Comedy Awards and I, I lost my ticket. Well, my mom lost her ticket. So I gave her mine and I figure I'm the winner. I got this trophy in my hand. I won't have no problem getting in. They wouldn't let me in. Wow. De uh, Debbie walks up behind me and goes off. <laughs> They let me in when she finished. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in there. I was like, thank you so much, Debbie Allergy. If she was a white girl, I was like, uh-oh. Uh okay. Yeah, Debbie Allergy. Well, Debbie Allergy has been in the game for a year. Big ups to Debbie. Love her. Yes. You know, I never knew about beef. And I'm quite sure beef is on in, in the uh, filming industry. I'm quite sure. Who? How? Like beef, like having little arguments and, you you know. Oh, you yeah, of course. There's people who are on the same set, can't stand each other. But the, they want that money for that movie. So they're going to do right. what they got to do. And that was my next question. I was going to ask you, how would you approach a scene when you don't get along with your scene partner? <laughs> well, what, usually when you're in scene, you're in a character. So it's not even me anymore. It's whoever I'm playing. And. Mm -hmm. That person is has a relationship with whatever character they're playing. So we're in character when we're in scene. But once the cameras come off and we back at the trailer, you be your mama. Your, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I no, I, I'm pretty cool. I don't. I haven't had a problem with anybody so far. Thank God. You know, I try to stay in my lane and mind my business. Right you know, now. if I see something that's really disrespectful and uncalled for, I, I might chime in and be like, hey, y'all need to chill on all that. Something like that. I, I'm usually the voice of reason. So other than that, yeah. But this is a, a dirty business we in. You got to be careful. You can't tell everybody what you're doing because right. they might know somebody that knows somebody. And next thing you know, they doing it and you not. So right. you got to keep your mouth shut till um, you sign the dotted line. And even then, sometimes you can't tell it. I had a friend telling everybody about his TV show and she signed all the paperwork and everything and it never happened. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You gotta stay. You gotta keep your mouth shut. You know. Some you gotta don't shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know I was doing that Snoop Dogg messing around comedy show till they started promoting it. Because everybody, it. Would, every woman in the game wanted that spot that I was in. Trust me. Wow! Wow! Every woman comedian wanted that spot. But if it's for you, then it's for you, right? You can't block God. Ain't nothing you could do. Anything he, I'm supposed to get, he gonna make sure I get it. So you could, I still, you still have to keep your mouth closed too. Yeah. But I believe in him. I trust him. He ain't let me down yet. And I'm blessed. I don't need a big mansion and a $50 million. I'm Come straight. More money, more problems. That's right. That's right. We read right about that. And can we oh, back? so you got a lot of money over there, huh? <laughs> uh huh. Tell it. I wish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. And you, you also talk about foreplay. Can we can we talk about foreplay? Sure. Yeah. And what how, happened to that? <laughs> yeah. How did that happen with foreplay? 
Ain't bad. no more foreplay. They don't want to do foreplay no more. They just want to straight stick it in. I'm like, hey, hold up, hold up. You got to do something. Why is it dry? Because you didn't do nothing to get it wet. That's why it's dry. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You remember when you was a teenager? What was you doing then? It's, it's, it's do it's all out. that. Suck a titty or something. <laughs> you know, rub on something. Come on now. What you think them hands is for? Wow, Do wow. something. Yeah. And then but, put a condom on that thing you got over there. <laughs> me and crack me up. They think because they go down on you. They talk about, so I still got to wear a condom? Yes, sir. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with you. Wow, wow. You you know I was talking about the movie, right? <laughs> oh, no. <nah. laughs> <laughs> what movie for a play? Come on, as you had Come On Man and Foreplay. He had credits in that. I don't remember either one of them movies. Foreplay. I Come don't know. Man. Everybody huh? hates Chris. Everybody hates Chris. Oh, that it never aired. I filmed it, but it didn't. I had my whole family sitting in front of that TV waiting on that scene, and it didn't air. I didn't think it was because they had me offering cigarettes instead of candy to the trick or treaters. I was like, is this. Oh, don't wow. get past network. Wow. I don't man. think this is going past network. So it never aired. But that was the name of that show was foreplay? It was foreplay. And, oh. and come, on, come on, man was another one. Like, come on, man. I don't know. That was another Chris Rock show? No, that was something else. You had credits in. That's uh, I don't man. know what that was. I've done the uh hair show and yeah, three hair strikes show. and three first strikes. Sunday mm -hmm. and I even had a little bitty part in Money Talks. I, it, it didn't even make the cut, but it's, they still gave me credit for it for whatever reason. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you, that's do you? it for me. A couple of little independent films. I can't even remember what the name of them. Maybe that's what the name of well, Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, because Come on, you, man. Yeah, you have an extensive... When you look at it, you have credits and you all over the place. So, uh, this is... Uh, yeah. God is good. Yeah, you, you you don't even know. You have so many so many movies, you don't even right. know. Right. <laughs> I don't even remember half of the stuff. Right. Uh, some of the tours I've been on, they be trying. Remember that time we? I don't. Like, no, you don't. Right. I don't remember. I'm sorry. But while on tour, what what do you like to eat as far as like, um, do you go to like a, a special type of place while you're on tour? Any restaurants like seafood? What do you like to eat? I love seafood. Seafood is it for me. I love seafood, but like I did a show with Country Wayne New Year's Eve and he had these vegan caterers come in. Oh my God. That it's vegan good. food was absolutely delicious. Right, I right. think they're going to try to make me a vegan. So I know now when I go out, I'll be looking for a great vegan restaurant as well as seafood. Yeah. Yeah. I, I That's what vegan. I like to eat. Vegan is, is very, it's good. It's very good, healthier. It's very good. Yes. Yeah. And these, they made the best greens and macaroni and cheese. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Delicious. Yeah. They had meat that looked like steak, but it wasn't steak, but, but it tastes good. It tastes delicious. I'm thinking the food's going to be like plant based, but it wasn't. It was just delicious. Yeah, it, it'll look like chicken. It has a different right. taste, but it's still right. excellent. But it was delicious, though, still, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, like I said, I did it for eight years. I was a vegan. And, and I love oh, it. wow. Yeah. So why'd you stop? Because I had to get. My mother did this to me. It was eight years. I, I walked in her house. She making some turkey spaghetti. Oh, I'm with the spaghetti with turkey. And I oh. started mixing it and mixing it. And I was trying not to go there. But I said, you know what, mom? Let me taste a little bit of it. And she gave me right. a spoonful. I never went back. I, I mean, I always did the turkey. I, that's all I really do is turkey. Right. I, I still do vegan, but I love my chicken. Some turkey, turkey spaghetti. Oh, man. Oh. Me too. Me too. I love me some turkey spaghetti oh, and man. oh, just and I love the vegan food. I'm not vegan, but I will eat vegan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really good for you. you right, know? and it's supposed to be so much healthier for you. 
Now you don't know what you're eating no more. You don't know what they done yeah. did. You think. Well, you know what? I bought some chicken wings the other day, and it was pretty obvious steroids were in this chicken because it's it looked swollen, like. Right? Yeah, they were the. They look like turkey wings. I'm like, oh, I put them back. I'm like, I don't even want these. That's right. That's right. Just give me some regular chicken. I don't want any steroids to make them giant look like turkeys. I don't want those natural. That's sad, man. Well, we don't know what we eat nowadays. You know, you everybody say, "Well, yo, you grew up on it." No, we didn't grow up on what they feeding us now. I no. didn't. It's different. My my grandmother, it was way different back then, you know, in the eighties. Right. The food was different. right. Yep. Even and, some of the vegetables have been steroids put in those as well. I'm like, really? Everything I've eaten. never seen a cucumber this big ever. Fruit it, the the grapes doesn't have seeds no more. A lot of the grapes they seedless. Right. Now, a bunch of them. Even the watermelons are seedless. Even watermelon, I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> they just okay. they in the lab. They in the lab making this stuff. I oh, know. all kind of shit. You know, <laughs> just like they doing the dogs. They mix and making dogs out of I don't know what. I'm like, please stop. Toy poodles and just yeah. making up stuff. And then they want to charge you three thousand dollars for this fake dog. I'm like, no. Yeah. That's why you got And the food is outrageous as well. That's right. God said pray over it. That's all you gotta do. Pray That's over. all I can do. Pray and and try to eat the right thing still, you know, try to eat some vegetables and stuff yeah. like that. It's healthy for you and drink a lot of water. That's right. That's right. Overload on it. You know? Yeah, I, I used to. I hate water. I'm not a big water fan. But now that I've passed 50, I'm drinking water more now for sure. I was yeah. addicted to Pepsi. I don't drink alcohol. I've never drank alcohol. Oh, so wow. I just yeah I see other people and I was like if that's what alcohol do I don't want nothing to do with it. That's right. I'm it, good. I don't want to be sloppy drunks. Yeah. The same thing over and over again. I pass. It, it 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 takes a young person to give them an old looking face. You know, a young right. Person. Wow. And that's that's deep. And and this business here is it better. Do you think it's better to negotiate deals yourself or to use an agent? Well, I've been doing, I've been in comedy for 32 years. January made 32 for me. And I've negotiated every tour, every show. Wow. You know, what happens is I'll get an agent right after a tour and they don't even do anything. They just sit there waiting on me to book another tour so they can get 10%. But Wow. They're usually fired by that time. I'm, they're terminated. If you, if I got to get my own self in the clubs, then what do I need you for? That's right. That's right. You're right. So basically, so I've been booking. Cheryl Underwood told me that long time ago. Book yourself. I was like, oh, okay, sure. Oh wow, that's that's great. So it, you get you get all the back end. All the money comes to you. Straight to me. God gets the ten percent. Right. Not no agent. That's right. I know agent. Yep. And being as though you are filming, you're producing, you're writing, uh, you, you're, um, you're, you're doing it all when it comes to filming. You're doing your own thing. I'm trying if, here. You're doing it. You're not trying. If you were filming a movie about your life, what celebrity would you get to play to play you? Oh, I, probably Regina King. Okay. Yeah. No similarities. Yeah. Okay. I love Regina. She's an excellent actress. Mm -hmm. So it would probably be her or Viola. <laughs> Viola Davis. Yeah. Yeah, Viola. That's th those those are good people that were um I think fit that will fit that. Right. You ever think mm -hmm. about doing that? Just, just a film about me? About yourself, yeah. Well, I got a lot more to go on this journey before I get to that point. So, like I said, I got something coming up. And then after all is said and done, then, yeah, I would love to do a film about Melanie Camacho before I check off of this planet. Well, that, I think that would be great if you put that together. Yes. You know? you know, one day. If, yeah, one day, you know, as you can continue to go, you'll get into it. I know you will. You put it right together. Yep. You will. And I know, like, in certain situations in life, you know, mm -hmm. it 
certain certain situations in life could transform a person and make them completely shut down and disconnect Correct. themselves from others. Have you ever right. went through that and still had to perform or continue to show up to finish a film while you were going through? Oh something? hell yeah! And, and I, you- I, my mother died the day we sh- the day before we shot the American Hustle with Cat Williams, Lunell, and Red Grant. So. I had to go from my mother, who was my best friend, to go to this movie set. And she would have wanted me to go. And I didn't want to sit in that house moping about, you know, my mom's death. You know, wasn't nothing I could do about it. It was, you know, so that took my mind off of it for a day. But yeah, that that I had to do that. Wow. So filming got- that American Hustle right after my mother's death was not easy. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I just have a, just two more for you. Um, like I said, you have been in the business for a long time. You've seen a lot and also experienced many things. If you mm-hmm. can start fresh and do this all over again, what is it that you would that you would do different? Uh I probably save more money. You know, when you first get in the business, I ain't never made that kind of money before. I mean, I was getting paid for one show what it would take me two weeks to do as a technician at Hughes Aircraft. So I'm just having a ball buying this and that and splurging and not realizing that this tour is going to be over in a minute. Then what you going to do? So that's what I would do different. I would manage my money a little better okay that's that's great that, that's that's a good that's a good question good comeback too it's, people would have said something different but that's definitely great manage your oh money. i definitely manage my money different well when you everything on that stage, else was good i mean you know yeah. a lot of girls think because they're chocolate that you know that's why they're not getting a job but i think it's the reason I got the jobs because their yeah. wives who were light skinned, they weren't intimidated by my black ass. So they was like, yeah, you can have her go on, take her on the tour. Yeah, she, she good. And so I got to do a lot of shows. And you still at it. Are you getting, still I know you're getting more phone calls to, to do more, uh, you know, to do more shots and scenes. I know you are. You know, oh yeah. Do you turn down a lot of, a lot of scenes, you know, a lot of scripts? No, I wish that that has not been my case ever. Now that's been my hurdle, crossing over to film and TV. I'm I'm not getting the calls, the auditions, anything. Okay. Um, but like when I did get the movies that I got, it, it was a hookup. Monique's brother called me for a hair show. David Tauber called me for first Sunday. Um, I just happened to be on the set for um, three strikes, so. God made all them things happen. And, you know, some of the stuff uh, is sometimes you try to be in a film and you don't get the part, you're devastated, and then you see the film and be like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for not letting me get the part in that garbage-ass movie. That's right. That's right. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. So he, he will right. put you in nothing that he don't want you in. He just, he just not right. That, that's not going to let me shine. So, right. uh-uh. Now, now back to comedy on stage when you when you're on stage performing stand up does mm-hmm. it make you feel free for that moment by expressing what you feel inside and making people laugh oh yeah i mean after the first laugh it's it's on and popping i'm just having a good time i'm just having fun and trying to make you forget about your problems for the hour that i'm on stage that's my goal that's right. Well, Melanie. Comedy is healing. Yeah, it is. And they say laughter. Laughter also was great. <laughs> you know, it is. Yes. That's wonderful. I just want to thank you, Melanie Comarcho. I I, I want to. Comarcho. <laughs> Comarcho. Right? Comarcho. Viewers, we have. I see. This is a legend. The legendary Melanie Comarcho. She's. She arrived on A Vision Media broadcast. She actually kept her word and gave me this interview. I thank you so much for that. I really thank do. you for having me.